Hi and welcome. This time around we have another milling machine repair and it's a minor one. It involves uh, having a silver and deming bit, not this one. This is a one I got with a lot of tools that's really chowdered up. Um, involved a silver and deming bit uh, sticking or catching in the burr, the exit burr that I was making because uh, I didn't step up in sizes slowly enough. So it caught and it pulled the collet tight and it sheared off the alignment pin inside the R8 collet down here and you can reach your finger up and feel where it should be uh, and it is not there. A um, little bit of trivia here, silver and deming bits, most people have probably seen them, they're a half inch shank on a much larger size bit and I thought silver and deming was uh, the name of the processes that they were used to cut, you know, things they were used to do. But I had no idea what Deming was, and so when I went and looked it up, I found out that Silver and Deming was a company from the 1890s, and uh, it was two guys' names. And uh, anyways, it has nothing to do with what they do. Uh, they're just a reduced shank drill bit, uh, good for alignment because their shanks are cylindrical. Um, if you get too much torque, they're supposed to slip, like this one obviously spent plenty of, plenty of time doing. Um, but in my case, it did not. It was an Albrecht chuck and it held on tight. And actually it was so bad that in order to get the drawbar out, I had to get an impact wrench to loosen it uh, when it caught on the exit burr. And it, at the time I didn't know, but it sheared the alignment pin off the R8 collet. So we're gonna be replacing them. Uh, my mill is a Chinese-made mill, and the alignment screw, mine's an Acra, so I was able to get parts from the manufacturer. It's an M6 by 1.0 uh, uh, set screw. Um, bridge ports are quarter 32, and uh, the only reason I can think they went to 32 threads per inch rather than have the fine ad depth adjustment control is because they wanted you to have to buy this somewhat expendable part directly from the manufacturer, which I think is just kind of crappy. Um, so if you have an American made or an American direct copy, then it's gonna be quarter 32 threads. And uh, for mine, it's an M6 by 1.0. Alrighty, so let's just get in here and replace this alignment set screw. Uh, another difference between bridge ports and some other ones, I don't know how mine's going to actually function, is that the bridge ports, uh, the early bridge ports, once you get this uh, locking uh, piece off, you actually have to knock the spindle cartridge out a little ways to get access to the backing screw behind the nut. By the way, there is supposed to be a backing screw that locks this in place and locks its depth adjust. Interesting uh, point made by the... Uh, by Acre where I bought this was that I wanted to buy a backing screw just in case I lost it because it's a fairly small uh, set screw. What they said was if you just take the sheared pin set screw and use that as a backing screw for your next one if you lose it because it's the same threads which is a really interesting point. Um, so what I'm going to want to do here is just so I get this back in alignment is I'm going to put a mark on the threaded portion uh, of this nut that goes on the bottom here and that way I can count the number of revolutions and put it right back where it was from the factory. Now, uh, people use feeler gauges. Some of the guys on the internet that have uh, shown replacement videos use feeler gauges in here to measure the spacing and uh, <clears throat> reproduce that exactly. Uh, the Bridgeport guys say somewhere around three thousandths or less. I've seen some that say six thousandths or less. When I measured mine with a feeler gauge, uh, this is a much bigger gap, and it's around 15 thousandths. But rather than reproduce that, I would like to know um, how this uh, loading is supposed to be done. But since I don't know, I am just going to put a mark here on both pieces, and then I am going to uh, count the revolutions when it unscrews and uh, just reproduce that. Alrighty, so let's just get in here and replace this. But before I do, another, another topic to bring up, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, I've read lots of uh, comments in the Practical Machinist Forum and a lot of machinists that have been working for many, many years say that they're, they don't bother replacing theirs. They've never had the alignment pin since they've owned their mills. And uh, I can see that. I mean, it is a hardened seat and R8 collets are hardened. Um, the wear should be only a little bit, but if they ever spin, you would think it would gall up this very 
very uh, smooth taper in here. And that doesn't seem like a good idea. However, it has been brought up that these pins really aren't all that strong and uh, that they're just for alignment of the collet so that when you take the collet in and out, it's reproduced uh, orientation. But collets don't typically tighten up the same way every time. So I don't uh, know if that's really a, a good argument. Maybe it is. Um, but I'm going to put mine back because it seems like the good idea. And uh, if you have a tight collet, it might just provide that just extra bit of, uh, you know, locking force. Uh, but there, here's, here's an interesting downside to it, which another uh, user commented on, which was, um, in his case, when this pin sheared off, the piece sheared off, and then got wedged between the collet and the bore, and it scored the whole inside of the bore, which seems like a really bad idea uh, and very hard to fix. So there's an argument for not putting a pin in. I'm gonna put mine back because I want it back to factory original, but I'm sort of on the fence as to the necessity of one. A lot of very experienced machinists have said they don't need them and haven't used them and haven't had any problems. So uh, I don't know uh, where I sit on this argument, but I am going to replace it. First step, I am just going to mark the column and the locking nut on the bottom of the quill here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to take this locking nut off and put it back on in the same place. So I'm going to unscrew it and count revolutions. Now, some people pop a feeler gauge in here and uh, use that measurement to come back to, which makes very good sense. That's a good, reliable way to come back. So for mine, the gap is about 16 thousandths or 0.4 millimeters. Uh, the point, uh, 0.017 uh, doesn't quite fit in. So 16 thousandths is what uh, I need to come back to. Now, before you can remove the nut on the bottom of the uh, spindle cartridge, there is a set screw on the, on the quill that you need to get to by dropping the quill down. And it's right here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, going to pop an Allen in there and unscrew that. My lathe is a Chinese lathe, so it's metric. And here is the uh, set screw that locks this quill nut. Now I need to grab a spanner and in the bottom of the quill nut, there are two, two holes either side. And hopefully with a regular spanner, I'll be able to get to it and untighten this. All right. Fortunately, my nut was not particularly tight. So I am going to unscrew it all the way off. And there I went and forgot to count revolutions. That's just awesome. And uh, pop that guy out. That's actually pretty nice. And then if I am lucky, if they designed it nicely, um, I will be able to get to the set screw right here. So there is a back locking, a backing screw behind it. And uh, um, so I got to remove the outer set screw, which holds the inner set screw in and just replace it. Now, as I mentioned before, on some older bridge, bridge ports, you actually had to pop the spindle cartridge down so that you could get access to the set screw at all. Fortunately, they fixed that in current designs. So let me rotate this way. Alrighty, so in order to get to it, you're going to want to have the kind of uh, Allen wrench that has the little ball end on it so that you can come in at a slight angle and uh, remove the backing screw. There we go. So if it's, uh, if it's too tight to back this screw out because the threads got gummed up, actually mine has some locking, uh, some removal Loctite on it. Um, what you can do is you tighten the set screw into the column, uh, into the spindle shaft, and that way you won't lose it. So that's actually a pretty handy trick. So I, I'm going to save this set screw because I'm going to use it in the future as a, or as a replacement backing screw if I need it. And the backing screw's job is to back up behind the front set screw to make sure that this depth does not change. All right, next, once you've got the, set, the replacement set screw with pin in the column, you take a good R8 collet like this one and you pop it in with the slot aligned and you tighten the set screw down till it just snug and then back off a little bit. 
Now, in my case, since not all of, uh, one of the common mistakes of the foreign collets, uh, the less expensive ones, like uh, the majority of my collets, since I can't afford all good ones, um, is that this slot, like this one's not milled as deeply as the standard suggests. And so you gotta make sure it fits that as well. And see, that's too tight. So I need to back off just a little more for that one. Then once you've done that, pop in the backing screw. Now in my case, when I tighten the backing screw, it's also tightening the, uh, the set screw in front. So what I'm gonna have to do is try this again, but I'm going to put some Loctite on the, the slot alignment pin because it's, uh, it's got too much slop in it. It's not so tight. And the backing screw is just making this one rotate with it. So uh, in order to make sure it doesn't move around and get a collet stuck or not be able to get a collet in and have to take the thing apart when I'm in a hurry, I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on this guy, a removable Loctite. Last step. Put the spindle cartridge nut back on. It's fine thread, so starting it can be a little bit challenging. Thread back on the spindle retaining nut, and remember that it's uh, backwards. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try and line this up where it was before, which is about right here. I think I need just a little bit more. And then don't forget to put back in the locking nut. And uh, remember not to over tighten it because you can damage the threads just snug. And that's it. All done. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.